Let's use the four-step solving process. For our state step, we wish to test the following hypotheses at the alpha equals 0.01 level. Our null hypothesis is mu sub 1 equals mu sub 2. And since we're looking for any difference, our alternative hypothesis is mu sub 1 is not equal to mu sub 2 where mu sub 1 is the true mean number of eggs laid in the secure caves, and mu sub 2 is the true mean number of eggs laid in the risky cave. Now we don't know the population standard deviation. We know the sample standard deviations for each of these groups, but not the population standard deviations. So we have to use a t-test. So for the plan step, if conditions are met, we will conduct a two-sample t-test. That's our inference method. So for the random condition, since the treatments were randomly assigned, this was a randomized comparative experiment, so the random condition is met. For the normal condition, we have really small sample sizes, 10 and 9, so we have to assume the data is roughly normally distributed. Now in the stem of the problem, we're told the data is roughly symmetric, unimodal, and has no outliers, so that sounds like it's roughly normal. So we're going to say it's safe to use t-procedures. Now for the independent condition, we need to check that the number of eggs each fish laid was independent of the others, and also that the secure cave and the risky cave groups were independent. So due to the random assignment and the isolation of each female, um, in the previous problem it said the researcher made sure the fish could not see each other from tank to tank, we can view the individual fish and the groups as independent. Now we're going to do the do step on the calculator. If you press stat and you go over to test, Option four is a two sample t-test. Now you can either put in the raw data or the stats. We have the summary statistics in our table right here. So it asks, what's the first mean? The mean of group one, the secure cave group is 404.8. The standard deviation is 74. And the sample size was 10. Then for the risky cave group, our mean was 247.6 and the standard deviation was 74.7, and our sample size was 9. Now since we're doing a two-sided test, a test for difference, we're going to leave mu sub 1 not equal to mu sub 2, but these options over here are for one-sided test. Now where it says pooled, if we happen to know that the standard deviations between the two groups were the same, we could say yes to pooled. This almost never happens. Uh, my suggestion is your default should be no for pooling in t-test. So I'm going to leave it at no. Now if you go down to calculate and you press enter, here's our results. So our test statistic is 4.6. That's a good distance from zero. And here's our p-value. Now be really careful with p-values like this. Down here this e to the negative 4 is indicating scientific notation. So this p-value is actually 0.000 two, six, four-ish. It's not two. All p-values have to be between zero and one since they represent probabilities. So this p-value is actually fairly close to zero. Now for degrees freedom, the calculator actually uses a fairly complicated formula that takes advantage of both our sample of 10 and nine to get a pretty hefty degrees freedom, about 16.75 in this case. So let's copy everything down, both what we input into the calculator and what the calculator returned. Now we're ready to conclude. Now anytime our p-value is reported in scientific notation, you can use this alternate wording in your conclusion. With a p-value of approximately zero, which is less than any reasonable alpha value, we reject the null hypothesis. There is overwhelming evidence to support the claim that there is a difference in the true mean number of eggs laid in the secure and risky caves by the convict cichlids. Now for part B, instead of saying approximately zero, we'll use a rounding of our p-value. If there really is no difference in the mean number of eggs laid in the secure and risky caves by convict cichlids, the probability of us observing a difference this extreme in our sample means is only about 0.000264. If you like this video and want to learn more about significance test, check out this playlist. It starts with the basics like stating hypotheses and builds up to two sample significance tests like this video.